Hey again, New Life, Stan Rada here. Hey, how many of your stories sound something like this? One of my favorite times was when I was with this certain group of friends and we were all together eating. And you can think about a specific group of friends, a specific time, a specific restaurant, a specific place where you have this really strong uh, memory attachment to some great night, to some great moment. And when I was growing up, I can tie almost any fun moment eating out to a terrible place to eat now that I'm an adult. But back when I was a kid, it was a blast. A place called Casa Bonita in Denver, Colorado. Not such a good place to eat as a grown-up, but man, as a kid, it just provided tons of memories where family and friends would gather for all kinds of occasions. And this is one of those things about us that when we have a meal with people, it's amazing the memories and the stories that come from that time. Jesus was the same way. I love how many times in the Gospels we find Jesus just enjoying and eating a meal with friends, with family. Uh, there was the, the wedding feast in Cana where they celebrate for seven days and they just, they just eat and eat and eat for a week. Uh, there's, the, there's the time of when Jesus had a, a fresh fish breakfast on the beach waiting for his disciples who were off uh, in the boat. Uh, Jesus would spend time in people's homes that we may feel uncomfortable, like a, the prostitute. He, he ate a meal in a prostitute's home, or Zacchaeus, the tax collector. Jesus enjoyed having a meal with people that he was around. But on the week before Jesus will go to the cross, during that time, there's a very special meal that Jesus has with his disciples, his closest followers in the upper room. And a few of the Gospels share this meal that he has with his disciples. But one of my favorite uh, ways that it is put in the Gospel is Matthew chapter 26, starting in verse 26. As they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, after giving thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. But I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. After singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. In this meal that we call communion or the Last Supper, the Lord's Supper. This is a meal that we remember weekly as a church, as followers of Jesus, and we gather around communion each and every week to remember what Jesus has done for us. In fact, there's a few things that Jesus specifically invites us to in this meal. One is to simply look back and remember. You can, you can look back and remember all the way back into the time of Israel when they were enslaved in Egypt. And when God arrives on the scene to free His people, He sends plagues. It's fascinating how many times God shows up and does these uh, unbelievably big things, miraculous type moments through plagues. And Jesus, or God, He goes down to Egypt and He uses plagues to free His people. And the very last plague that the Bible tells us about is the tenth plague when death enters the scene. There's a, this, this angel that carries out God's justice, but every time the angel gets to an Israelite home where blood of a lamb was on the doorpost, that angel would just pass over, which is where we get that language, the Passover. He would see the, the sacrificial blood and he would pass over that home. And in communion, Jesus invites us to remember. Remember what exactly? To remember that our sins are passed over because of what Jesus is about to do for us on the cross. Another thing that Jesus invites us to is He just invites us to eat. In essence, He invites us to participate. When we, when we take some, some, uh, some bread and we take some juice and we, and we eat and we participate together, we are participating in the life and the death of Jesus. We are saying publicly, we are declaring to the world what we believe about Jesus. 
when we are invited to that meal to share in communion, we say, I believe who Jesus is. I believe that he died in my place and I participate. I, I align myself with who Jesus Christ is and what he has done for me. It's a, it's a wonderful opportunity for the realignment of followers of Jesus Christ as he invites us to eat this meal. And then the last thing, and one of the, maybe not the last ultimately, but one thing that comes to my mind is that we are also invited to this place of unity. Um, We're invited to this place of unity because churches every single Sunday are full of such a unique gathering of people, people who are very different from each other. When Jesus sat at the Last Supper uh, in the upper room with his followers, he was sitting around the room with with fishermen, with tax collectors, with zealots, zealots being the, the guy that wanted to assassinate the tax collector because he hated what he did so much. And Jesus shares a meal with them in unity together in the upper room. When we gather and we share together in communion, our churches, our buildings, our seats are full of people who are different. They look different. They sound different. They vote different. They all brought something with them, some kind of baggage. They brought a, a, a hurt, a pain, a scar, uh, and everybody's is maybe just a little bit different. And yet when you come to, to gather and share in this meal, this communion, this last supper with other followers of Jesus Christ, you are invited to unity, that all of us are one in Jesus Christ, that our differing backgrounds don't matter, uh, that some of the places we have been don't matter, but that we are all on equal footing at the cross before Jesus Christ. And he says, come and be united with each other um, in this meal. So I love this picture we get In the upper room at Passover, Jesus sharing in this final meal with his closest followers saying, remember, think about this time, eat and participate with me in this. You guys are more united than you realize. So the next time you take communion, maybe when it comes this Sunday at Easter and we share online and you're participating in communion, I want to invite you to the same place Jesus did to remember Passover, to remember what Jesus has done for you on the cross, to to eat and to participate and to align with Jesus Christ and ultimately to be united with a bunch of other people who believe the same thing about Jesus Christ that you do. Looking forward to seeing you guys on Sunday.